everyone and welcome to Radiant Pearls Ministries. I'm Justina Sanchez. And I'm Jeanette Bradley. We are so excited to have back with us today the amazing, powerful prayer warrior, Gina Marie Sadler. I, I just want to give you a huge welcome and I, I wanted to let you know that when you came on last year, mm -hmm. we had so many people mm -hmm. reach out and say that your words just really encourage them to understand the power of prayer. Yes. And it's not just, you know, um, you know, bless this food, amen. <laughs> but there's power yes. in prayer. There's yes. protection in prayer. Yes. And so you're coming back today to give us a double dose so everybody needs to hang on. This is going to be powerful. <laughs> yes, Welcome, Gina Marie. Oh, We're so blessed to have you here. Oh, it's such an honor and a privilege to partner with Radiant Pearls Ministries. You are two phenomenal beauties in the Holy Ghost. And so I appreciate you allowing me to be a part of your vision today. Thank you. Yes. We thank you so much for being here, coming back. And like she said, I just want to echo those words. We got such a great oh, response wow. of people reaching out saying, I received greater revelation and to my prayer life. I understand thank things you. were revealed. And so we thank you for releasing that. And yes. we look forward to this today. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. So last time you were here, mm -hmm. your favorite dessert was ice cream. Has that changed? <laughs> Nothing has changed. It's absolute. <laughs> ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> I, I've been eating a lot of ice cream too. Mm. But now that we got that important thing out of <laughs> let's talk about praying in the 11th hour. What does that mean and the purpose My of that? You know, the Lord is, is we're in a critical time now. now. Let me let me just read this real quick. And first John 2, 18, uh, little children. This is the, the Apostle John. It is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, mm -hmm. even now, many Antichrist right. have come mm -hmm. by which we know that this is the last hour. The, because of the uh, the nature of this spirit of the Antichrist, we know that the Antichrist is, is soon to be revealed at a future time. Yeah. But we know that this hour is critical. It's like the last uh, hour of the day. It's that critical moment in time and season that we need to set ourselves to see God like never before mm -hmm. because we are contending against a, a, a formidable adversary mm -hmm. who's planning for keeps, who knows that his time is coming to an end. That's right. right. So, right. so in the 11th hour, yes. how do we know what, what is our purpose and mm -hmm. what's our assignment? Okay, so... We, so let me let me read some things. I'm going to try and get some scriptures in and cover as much as possible. You're going to have to do your research, but <laughs> I'm going to throw some things out. So understanding that first thing, and, and this is very common, it says Matthew 6, 9 and 10. It says in this manner, therefore, pray, right? Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the purpose is to bring the kingdom of God. Amen into demonstration, what? So his will can be done. Mm -hmm. So when the will of God is done in the earth, the glory of God is revealed. People come to him, people see him, people draw to him, and people are saved and delivered. So the key for us is to pray what the word of God, which is the, what, the will of God, because we want to see the demonstration of his spirit and power. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the purpose. Now, so our assignment here, what we must do, Understand that God speaks through his logos, which is the written word, and rhema, which is his revealed word. So our assignment is to seek his face, hear the counsel of God, discern the heartbeat of God, so that we all know what God wants done here. So that when we release the sound of God in the earth, then heaven will recognize that we are saying the same things and we are in agreement with his will. Amen. Mm. Yes. Mm. Glory to his name. Yes. yes. So good. So good. <laughs> Mm. Can you speak to us a bit about praying through atmospheric pressures of principalities? Yes, yes, yes. When there's a pressure, that means there's, there's uh, atmospheric pressure. We're basically talking about the weight of something being exerted in a certain climate. So let me give you a quick testimony. I, I, I know we don't have a lot of time, but I, it, it sets the foundation. Uh, my first ministry engagement, I was very young in the Lord. I didn't understand principles and protocols of warfare. Uh, that's another uh, teaching, but understanding that there are territorial spirits 
And there are demons that are also have an assignment to prevent us from fulfilling what our assignment. So I was in Virginia and I went way across the East Coast and I didn't understand the uh, and when I usually travel and I have people I know in that area. I don't worry about my husband having to take off to come with me or bring in somebody because I have family and friends there. Mm -hmm. So I ministered it and, and, and I, I just moved as the spirit, you know, led me. So they brought me to the airport to come back home. OK. Mm -hmm. And I had such a battle getting a flight back home and I tried to get in touch with somebody. I couldn't get in touch with anybody to come get me from, you know, D.C. I was actually in D.C. I flew uh, to D.C. from Virginia and then I was going to fly back, was changing planes. And so I'm like, I'm stuck in this airport. And they kept saying, well, you don't have a flight for you. We can't get you out. And so the whole this is my first teaching of, of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord said, I want you to go outside. And I want you to let the Holy Spirit pray because there are spirits in this region mm -hmm. that are angry about the words you delivered mm -hmm. and they don't want you to get back home. They want to frustrate the purpose. Mm -hmm. They want to frustrate you. And I was ready to pay. I think the ticket was like four hundred dollars to fly in another city. I mean, I tried everything. You hear me? And I was so really didn't know. I didn't have a lot of understanding about ministry. And so I went outside and I just let the spirit pray. When I began to get revelation as I was tapping just in the realm of the spirit in that in that place, and I'm going to talk about seated in heavenly places with him. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that place, the Holy Ghost begins to open you up to new things that were going on in the spirit. And so I began to I just prayed in the Holy Ghost. I just prayed and let the spirit because we don't really know what we're doing. I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm like, you're going to have to do this. But as soon as I finished, I went back in. They said you have a flight. Amen. And the Holy Ghost yeah. taught me about atmospheric pressure from principalities and powers that would try to hinder the people of God and the work of God in the earth. Yes, <laughs> I love that. And I love that you at that time mm -hmm. had enough wisdom to know I need to get out there and pray. Yes. I need to seek the Lord. I need to release what he is doing. Come I need on. to break through that yes. because yes, they will try to hinder you. Yes, They will try to hinder you. So we encourage you, if you are yes. facing mm -hmm. something, there's challenges in your way. You are in a situation like that where Come you're on. frustrated. Mm -hmm. We encourage you, pray, get out That's there, right. pray yes. in the spirit That's and right. let the Lord work through you. That's it. He will, he will part them. He will move them yes. out of the way and he will bring forth yes. his plan so that he can yes. get glory. He knows there's a plan and only he can do it. Mm -hmm. So he wants you to know mm -hmm. you can't do it on your own. Yes. It's not going to happen yes. through your strength. It's something he has. So you need to pull that down from heaven yes. and let him release it. Yes. And that's, I've learned that throughout my praying seasons of praying when something it feels like you're hitting and you're not getting breakthroughs or you're not, if something's not breaking through, you have to step back and say, God, Give me a strategy or give me revelation. Why am I not ask questions? Because a lot of times we are just not praying the way God wants us to pray for that particular thing. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that to ask God, okay, show me. And when I've asked God to open me up to revelation that what's going on in the spirit room, because you can't see it, then he gives that wisdom. And I'm going to talk about wisdom, understanding and knowledge as well. Uh, and then God will show you how to create a weapon of warfare in the spirit to deal with that spirit or whatever you're facing. So, so good, Jana Marie. And one of the things that you said was when you talked about mm -hmm. how you were praying in the spirit yes. and things started to break up. Yes. Right. Yes. And yes. that, so that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a weapon right there. Come on. But another one is knowing your place mm -hmm. yes. as a yes. joint heir with Christ. Yes. I'm, I'm going to skip to that. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. Sometimes you have to flow with the spirit, right? <laughs> so here we are. So knowing your place of prayer, we have to have confidence that we have an inheritance with him and we are joint heirs with Christ. Let me read a couple of scriptures, Ephesians one and three. Um, Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Ephesians two, four through six. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our trespasses, our sins. It is by grace we have been saved and God raised us up in Christ and seated us in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to talk about knowing your inheritance, knowing where you sit. I'm going to talk about the realms in God where we sit. 
is key because if you don't have confidence and you don't know your identity, then you won't be able to contend, be a contender for the faith. You got to know that daddy loves you. You have to know who you sit. My God. And not saying we have this authority uh, per se. We have this sovereign authority, but he's letting us share and partner with him. Oh, my God. As the remnant of Christ. Amen. So so we have this place. I want to talk about um, how important it is to really know your assignment. Because I want to share one quick testimony of uh, John Evangelist John Ramirez. We know him, the ex-Satanist, right? John Ramirez. He says something that, that really quickened me because I do prayer walks. My events always have a prayer walk. We take this, go through the city and begin to, to assess the climate. That's what I'm talking about, assessing the climate that you're in. Understand what you're contending with because based on what's in that region, then you'll know how to ask God for the right weapon to deal with that, to conf- to have that confrontation, okay, to, to wage war because, uh, and then know that you have to understand, should I go up or should I not go up? You have to know that you can't always go up and contend either yeah. because you'll become a casualty mm-hmm. because there has to be a permission and access by the Holy Ghost. Right. So uh, John Ramirez said this one day. He said, when I was a, uh, a Satanist, I used to astral project out of my body. And I used to go out because I wanted to see what territory or land or region I could get. Because if I got that, I got the people. And he said one time he came out of his body and he saw saints praying on the corner. Now I'm getting excited. (laughs) He said I had to pass by. couldn't touch that area. Now, if that doesn't fire you up about being a priest of God and being in the heavenly realms with him, that when the enemy sees you on your post and in your assignment, he has to pass over. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Who is that not power in him? Wow. Ooh. I tell you, you got to be ex- prayer. Prayer is so exciting when you know that you are in partnership with the Holy Ghost. Isn't that beautiful? And when you understand it Come and on. it's open to you, it's Come like on. a lot of people are like this, you Come know, on. and you're like, there's this much. There's so on. much more. Yes. Come on. The Antichrist spirit, this is the hour we're in. The spirit, the spirit is here. And so we have to understand what is the DNA of Satan who drives, is going to be the, the, the fueler of the Antichrist when he's on the scene. Amen. During the tribulation period. And then the spirit, the spirit has the DNA of his daddy. Amen. And we, I don't have time to go into all of it, but in Daniel 7, 25, he talks about Daniel gets this revelation about the end time and the, and the beast, which is the Antichrist and talks about these are three things you have to understand. This is how you assess the, assi- the, the atmosphere as a believer. He said he is going to speak what against the most high. We see people speaking against God. Yeah. And remember, you don't always have to say it, but your behavior will confirm what you believe. That's okay. right. Right. Okay. That's right. And then two, what he's going to wear the saints out and he's going to prevail. People have been worn out. We've been worn out. Saints have been bruised to where they have retreated. My God, oh, they retreated. So the enemy's assignment one, he was going to talk uh, evil against the most high God. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to try- wear the saints out. And this is deep stuff Mm -hmm. (laughs) because we have to know this is what we're contending with. Right. Yes. And this is another thing he's going to do. Let me let me make sure I get this right here. This is the spirit of lawlessness that that the enemy has released in the land. They hate laws, the spiritual laws. And some folks don't like the laws of the land. Amen. And so it is a lawless generation we're dealing with. So we know that this is the hour. This lets us know the Antichrist spirit is is, is, is accelerating. We know that it's going to be a consummation later in the future. But now it is accelerating because the enemy knows his time is, is, is short. So now we know. Let me go back here. If I, I might have lost my place, but it'll come later if I don't get it now. But um So here we are. I want to talk about seating in the realms because the believer has to understand the power and authority that we in or we will become a a casualty and not a contender. Right. Right. We won't know which weapons to use. We'll walk carnally and not spiritually. See, it's sometimes it's hard even dealing with people we know and our family members. It's hard for me to stay spiritual with family members because, you know, you just it's emotional. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I have to say, listen, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but what they're mighty, what through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So this thing is a spiritual warfare. So I want to encourage the believer 
And you know, and when you go into Ephesians 6 and 10 and 12, it's talking about be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Now, that power is not exousius. It's not the, the, the power of ability or a permission. It's not, it's not even dunamis, the power of the miracle working power. But it's kratos. It's the power of God. It is it's, it's divine strength. So you want to stand in the divine strength of That's God right. yeah. when you're getting ready to deal with the principalities and powers and rulers, spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. I wish I had time to talk about the demonic hierarchy, but you, you, you get it. You go in and research it. So this is seven places, seven places. And I call it spiritual, uh, 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 your spiritual protocol, your spiritual code of conduct, mm -hmm. how you should behave, because you have to understand that God is going to deal with us before he deal with his enemies, mm. deal with our enemies, because God want to make sure we have clean hands and a pure heart. So what? We can see him. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. We can't war. And our lives are not aligned with the kingdom. That's right. You can't. You you will become a casualty. I'm, I'm warning you. That's right. So we talked about we sit in heavenly places in the heavenly realms of Christ Jesus. So it talks about what girding ourselves with truth, right? Mm -hmm. So you got this truth. Truth is a realm. It's a place we sit in, right? Because thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. And what else? The spirit of truth will lead us into all truth. So this is a place I tell people stay seated, because it's a place in Him. That makes us a contender when we're dealing with principalities and powers. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have truth, you cannot be a contender for the faith. That's right. You got to know what the spirit is saying. What? To the church. You got to know the word. I got to fly through this, but bear with me. And it said truth. What? Springs up. Psalm 85, 11. It says truth springs up out of the earth. That means it takes root. It means it comes up. And, and the second part says, and righteousness looks down. So when truth comes up, righteousness of God identifies with what's coming. <laughs> so good. So good. Oh. <laughs> so you got this righteousness, the righteousness of God. That's what we write. Our righteousness, what is as filthy rags. So don't get, don't get it twisted. Right. So when that, when you, that belt of truth recognizes the righteousness of God on us, mm. which gives us right standing to contend. Yeah. Mm. So the enemy won't what find anything in us. That's mm. right. We got to make sure. Now, listen, y'all go. Don't let me take up all the time. <laughs> Keep going. So you, yeah, so you yeah. hear that. And then all this is in Psalm 85. And so then it says peace. You talk about the peace of feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And listen, the good news, the good tidings. Listen, it says preparation without being prepared with the gospel. First, be you having the gospel in you. And then being able to deliver the gospel to somebody else. We can't contend for the faith. Mm -hmm. We can't stand against the powers that are operating up in the, in the air. Yeah. So the atmosphere pressure will begin to overwhelm you if you're not operating or seating in the realms of in Christ. These are places in him. Mm -hmm. Spiritual blessings. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So peace. And it says, listen, listen, righteousness and peace have kissed one another. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Y'all, <laughs> righteousness and peace. Because righteousness and peace, I said, I agree with you. Mm. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? That's, beautiful. that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And that's all in Psalm 85. It's beautiful. Read that. And so now we sit in those three. That's three places. Let me give you the other three real quick. And then we have faith. Now, listen to this. Now, faith. Now, peace. It says the gospel being preached, the good news. Right now, faith. Amen. The shield of faith. Faith coming by hearing and what? Hearing by the word of God. You see how God, the rams, like we connected in the rams with God because God is, is always in order and one. Right. He's never confused or, or divided. That's the spirit of the enemy. Yeah. Right? Okay. So we have the faith. And as we stay in fellowship to receive and believe, mm -hmm. then we still are seated with him. We got to stay seated. Don't get up from the table. Right. Stay seated. And then now it says salvation. And it talks about uh, a Jude. It, it talks about many are going to fall away from the faith. It's, it talks about being a contender. It says, I found it necessary to write to you and to exhort you to contend earnestly mm -hmm. for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out of condemnation, ungodly men who turned the grace of God into lewd, uh, lewdness. 
and deny the only Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we have to stay seated in Christ, because the enemy is seducing people. That's the uh, more of the nature of the Antichrist, a seducing spirit, what in doctrines of devils. So we have to learn how to stay seated. The only way we're going to contend against the powers that are trying to oppose my God, the work of God, the people of God and deny the Christ himself. The spirit of the Antichrist is to stay seated in the power of of Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's right. right. Got to stay seated. And then we have the word, the sword, you know, the sword. I didn't get to all that, but you know, now the, this, this word, uh, uh, this word, word is not logos, but rhema. Mm -hmm. So don't get caught up on just what's written, but ask God for a rhema word, a revealed word, a word that would take you into word of knowledge and word of wisdom in a prophetic realm in the Holy Ghost, because you're going to need a fresh word from God when you're dealing with different types of, they said there's many antichrists. Right, mm -hmm. right. So we get this summer. We can't even identify, mm -hmm. but the Holy Ghost, he said, I'll lead you into all truth. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm the spirit of truth. So we can't go wrong if we stay seated right. in Christ right, through the spirit of God. If you have the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. We have the spirit of God. So the spirit of truth is always going to keep us seated in the will of God mm -hmm. for the way of God to reveal the word of God. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. And let so you know. good. <laughs> it, it even says in Revelation mm -hmm. that those who deny Jesus. That's it. They are antichrist. There it is right there. That's in my notes somewhere, <laughs> but it's so true. And that's what, and that means you have to, and we say, well, um, denying him when that's a pattern and a practice and a lifestyle, you can't have the spirit and deny Christ. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there's so much, there mm -hmm. is so much spiritual warfare yes. going on. Come things on. that we don't see in the natural, Come on. they're happening all around Come you. On. So we encourage you, as she explained, to dress yourself in the armor of God, yes. in the armor of God, yes. the shoes of peace, the yes. belt of truth, yes. the breastplate of righteousness, the yes. shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, and the helmet of salvation, yes. and prayer and fasting. Stay warriored up. That's yes. it. Because there are things going on that you don't see, but you have everything it takes. Yes. And he yeah, has everything. given us yep. everything we need. Yes. So take your place. Like she said, stay seated. It's available to us. That is our inheritance. And that's what right. I'm trying to get to believe it. This rightfully belongs to you. But God is a God of conduct. So there's a spiritual behavior that we must carry and walk in right. in order to contend with the adversary. Because if not, there's going to be a breach and the enemy will have access to us when there's something that because he'll recognize sin. Mm -hmm. He'll recognize himself. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. He said, oh, there's a breach. And then he'll come in and we won't be as effective as God will, will, wants us to be. Now, it, it came to me now. That third thing that you know that you're dealing with the Antichrist spirit. He, he said he was changed the times and seasons and he would try and change times and seasons, appointed seasons. Mm -hmm. We know it's referencing the the Israel is going to try and change the festivals. Mm -hmm. He's going to, you know, sit in the temple of God as if he was God, denying everything about God. So we know that. So when you see these things and we know that this there's things going on in our government, in our nation that are coming against the laws of God and right. trying to change things, yeah. even laws established in our Constitution, in our Bill of Rights. Yep. That's a whole nother story story. But this how you know this is the last hour. So you need to work while it's what? Day. Yes. And so, amen, we just got to pay attention to this time. But there's so much on the place in the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to read the, I want to read the last part because this is key uh, about the protocol of warfare, uh, understanding the rules, amen, that govern and explain the conduct and the procedure on how we should follow. There, even the military have a code of conduct. And a lot of times believers are trying to wage war and trying to do some things in the spirit and they are carnal mm. and they are not in the will of God. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why you become a casualty. Right. So, yeah. Not effective. Mm -hmm. yep. But the key, uh, Ephesians 6, 18, after you've done all that, now it says pray in the spirit at all times mm -hmm. with every kind of prayer. We talked about on your last broadcast, the levels of prayer, the different times, mm -hmm. types of prayer. Sometimes there's you're going to worship. That's prayer. Sometimes you're just going to thank God. That's prayer. It's a form of prayer. It's not always asking and, and telling God stuff. It's sometimes it's just thanking him for what he's already done. Amen. That's where your faith steps in. But it says, and it says to this end, 
Stay alert and with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints. So we have to be ready. Okay, Gina Marie, will you share with us? That was such a wealth of information. Mm -hmm. What are the keys to persevering? Okay. Let me read this. Let me read Colossians 1, 9 and 10. It says, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, Paul had heard about the Colossians love and their faith for uh, the things of God. He said, do not cease. We don't we do not cease to pray for you and ask that you be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual intelligence that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of the Lord. Yeah. They are three keys. And when we say knowledge, that knowledge is epignosis. It's a vast knowledge, meaning you're discerning the time and the season and the heartbeat of God. Mm -hmm. And so let me give you these quick, uh, 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 it says being filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual intelligence. If you go to the, uh, the book of Proverbs chapters two and three, read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. God will show you that wisdom speaks, understanding answers mm -hmm. and knowledge demonstrate. Mm -hmm. it, it, God wants us to expand. Second key, expand our knowledge of him, practice his presence, abide in the secret place, Konania, fellowship with God, mm -hmm. because in that he reveals the secret of the kingdom yes. and the mysteries and we need some mysteries revealed yes. yeah. hallelujah because there's a mystery what of lawlessness a mystery of godliness there's mysteries that he wants us to tap into and open ourselves up amen yes. and this la and this last one actually was that but I want to talk this last thing you have an advantage point when you stay seated in those seven, those six realms in God and really seven because prayer is the seventh one mm -hmm. and so you have a view of what the enemy is doing in the earth mm -hmm. and God is moving in his, by his spirit through us because the Holy Spirit, what it says, the Antichrist cannot fully come until the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way. And so the spirit in us restrains and right, interrupts yes. the devil's yes, plan. That's right. So he has to stay in line with the prophetic future of God. Gina Marie, we want to thank you for joining us today. And remember, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and on our website at RadiantPearlsMinistries.com. And remember, you have strength, you have hope, and you have loveliness. We'll see you next time. <laughs>